David, this is an interesting story. I mean, we've done a lot of work with White House machine tools looking at some of their very sophisticated multi-axis turning centers. This machine is a little bit different. This is a 750. The story behind your purchase is, I'm sure, going to be very interesting to other engineers. Why did you buy this machine as a straight two-axis lathe? We do a lot of uh, oil and gas work, and particularly on this machine and the one it replaced. The, the one it replaced was a Belia. Uh, we'd had it 20 years, and uh, it'd been an excellent machine. And what's the characteristic that excels for you, or characteristics? Uh, the features on this machine, uh, it's got a, a big, uh, powerful motor, 95 mm uh, draw tube uh, through spindle. It's not got a bar feed on it, but we, we machine some big billets in a range of exotic materials. I can see here, and we're going to see the machine running in a minute, but that, that power thing is important. I did hear the machine running earlier. It's a very smooth machine to hear. But some of the size of the parts you're doing, you must be removing some serious material. Absolutely, yeah. We machine, as I say, uh, Inconel, Hastelloy, Monol, and 316 stainless all day, every day on it. Today, we're actually machining mild steel, but we machine big billets uh, down rapidly, or uh, you drill through very quickly on this machine, and the rigid uh, structure, uh, we don't get any vibration, it's a very good finish, and um, yeah, very pleased with it. And you gave your engineers, your operators, you, you left this decision down to them, didn't you? You kind of took a step back and said, right, you guys are going to be using it, you know what we've got to achieve, what machine is right for us, and they opted for it. Yeah, I do that with the guys. I mean, at the end of the day, they've got to, I want them to stay working with me, and uh, they've got to be happy with the decision, and I didn't want the responsibility, but I have to say I'm very pleased with the, the Belia, yeah, what they chose. And the machine itself, it was on a, a fairly lengthy lead time at the time because it was a new machine, it was a new model. I have to say, from a 12-inch chuck perspective machine, there are lots of machines you could pick up the phone and have one delivered in two or three days' time. But that wasn't an issue for you? No, um, we, we did look at other manufacturers, um, and as, as you've just said, the operator, um, after a long decision, we, we stuck with the Belia machine. The one we had that it replaced was 20 years old, still working perfectly all right. So as for the long delivery, no problem. It's a long-term gain. The power, 38 kilowatts of power, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And uh, over a thousand Newton meters of torque on the spindle. And uh, for us, machining um, the billets, so the grade of materials that we machine, it, it really does make a difference. Because the turret's pretty chunky as well. You, you, you didn't go for the... 16 station, I think you went for the 12. Yeah, I think uh, the standard spec on this machine is a larger chuck than that's on this machine and a 16 turret station. We went, we've downsized to a 12 inch chuck, uh, it's more than good enough for what we machine, and we went for the 12 turret station so we didn't get any tooling interference with the jobs we do regularly. We know that that will cope with what we need, and obviously, not being driven tools, we don't need extra tooling stations. And with the types of materials you're cutting, you're talking about Hastelloys, difficult materials. Yeah. How, how do you tackle those? Do you use things like high pressure coolant so you can get the best we have, chipping yeah. environment? We've got a high pressure pump on this and it's pretty impressive, yeah. Um, I think when the camera has a look, you can see uh, it's, it's quite a big unit and um, we've, we've seen some big gains with that and extended tool life. Let's see it in action. Okay, no problem.